everybody. Hey. Yeah. How's everybody doing this evening? Looks like we already got a thumbs up and a heart. Ooh. How about that? So it is. Soon we'll have two hearts. Two, two hearts? Yeah, that way I can have one too. Oh, okay. <laughs> so welcome to A Discord's Life this evening. And we are here with a very, very special show. And before we even really kind of get started in the show, we're just going to go ahead and we are going to bring in our guest. And so we have Heather with us. And that is Heather, but let me put us both on the screen here as I mess around with the software. There she is. Hey. Hi. All right. So this is Heather, everybody. This, of course, I guess we could introduce ourselves too. I'm Henry. For those of y'all don't know me. We uh, always forget to introduce ourselves every week. But, and I am Rita, and we are a Dissonar's Life. Brandy's already watching. So once you guys come on and see us, go ahead and share out. Let everybody know about this show tonight because we are really excited about the show when it comes to special diets for Disney vacations. That's right. We have Heather with us, and we're going to get into an introduction with Heather here in just a moment, but we want to talk a little bit about Disney news because it's actually been a pretty big week in Disney news. And Heather, at any point, please feel free to jump in and comment on this Disney news, okay? Okay. All right, cool. So, um, first thing in Disney news. What, do you know anything special about Disney you news? You know, I actually am way behind on everything. I've been doing so much of the store this past week that I have not kept up with my emails well. Really? I have not. I've, I've been a slacker. Oh, well. So There's a lot going on. I, I see that on this page, <laughs> but I did notice. not see all of that. So, all right. I'm working right now on, on checking some stuff on the feed also. Well, so this week, I think for me personally, one of the biggest announcements is that we can now um, book 2019 summer cruises. Have you been busy with any cruise quotes, Heather, this week? I have actually quite a few. Um, I spent probably four hours yesterday morning working on those just because they came so quickly and there were so many of them. But that's what we like to hear. That's, you know, we want people cruising Disney because we love Disney. Absolutely. Disney Cruise Line is absolutely the best. I just did oh. a little post on it. So, Lots of 2019. So that's nice. People are planning and saving up to go. Yeah. And of course, I, you know, as we like to tell people that, you know, with Disney Cruise Line, booking ahead of time, way in advance is what's going to save you money. Yep. Most definitely. Yeah. Hey, Libby. Thanks for joining us. Um, all right, so we have the 2019 uh, the cruise lines, the summer of 2019 that we can book now. But along with the cruise lines, this week was actually the Disney shareholders meeting, which kind of makes I did me, see some of that, that stuff. Yes, yeah. okay. I really, I thought that was two weeks ago. Uh, well, maybe it was the 8th. Okay, no, that was this week. That's, I think that's, it was the 8th. <laughs> so the shareholders meeting was this week and that for those of you who don't know every year disney has a shareholders meeting and sometimes they have announcements and things like that not like to the degree of say d23 convention or thing you know along those sorts of fan type sites but um they do have this meeting and that's where they showed some of the new image or i think an image of the newest Disney Cruise Line ships. And apparently they're going to be just slightly bigger than the Disney Dream. I, I thought that they were going to be a lot bigger. But my understanding is they're only going to be slightly bigger. I think they're only like 25% bigger as opposed to the 50% larger that um, the Dream and Fantasy was over the Magic. And oh, okay. okay. <clears throat> From what, what I read on it, and it was, uh, I saw the image on it. Um, it's the same classic look. Um, as they have on all their ships, so um, I'm, I'm a little more space. It. Yes. So, wait, do you remember what years we're getting those ships? I don't remember. Twenty, twenty-one, and twenty-two, okay. or twenty-one, twenty-two, and twenty-three. Okay. I think that's three separate years: twenty-one, yeah. twenty-two, and then twenty-three. Correct. Yeah, I just can't remember if it started yeah. at twenty or twenty-one. Um, I think twenty-one. Yeah, uh, I think you're right too. Twenty-one. So, so they're they're coming. They're not too far off. I mean, now. We're talking about being able to book itineraries in your cruises for 19. So two years from now, we'll be able to start booking itineraries. Oh, that's hey! I can't wait. Well, to know what those itineraries are. I'm really hoping for Hawaii. I that's my my dream. Uh, yeah, I it's would, about the only way you'll get me there. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> that's how I actually get her out there finally. So I'm you know. just I'm not real keen on flying. <laughs> Just, I did good to get her to fly out to California, um, and, and then as we were taking off, we were over water, and she oh, did not okay. enjoy that at all. Don't embarrass me. <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> I'm right there with you. I don't like to fly either at all. It's just kind of a means to an end. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, you're talking about shareholders meeting. Are you going to go next year? To the shareholders meeting? Yeah. Where's it at? I don't know, but you're a shareholder now. I am a shareholder. Oh, that's exciting. It is. That's pretty. I, that's she like, has two shares. I was like, I have two shares. <laughs> yeah, sort of a bucket list item, and, and it happened this last month. Yep. This month. Coming last out, month. Coming yeah. out of the holidays, basically. Yep. That's pretty cool. All right, so here's another one that is very exciting, is we actually got to see a flyover of the construction for Disneyland's Star Wars Galaxy. Was that set. Disneyland? That was okay. Disneyland. I never got a clear de definition that was land or world. Yeah, and I actually, if you guys can bear with me for just a minute, I have a video, and I'm going to share this video with you guys. just takes me a second to get it up and going. Um, because I think everybody would really like to see it. So just bear with me a second. Uh, maybe. <laughs> Let's see what I can get pulled up here. So you guys are looking at my screen right now. All right, here we go. Oh. That's my favorite part. Right there. That's my favorite part. <laughs> cool. Awesome. All right. So we are back, possibly, if I can get us back to... Yay. There we go. All right, cool. Technology <laughs> at, our, at its best. I love this software. All right. <laughs> so we can, like, show videos like that. So, yeah, we got to see that flyover for Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, which everybody is... I don't know about you, but, um, Heather, I have frequent questions about when can we book for that. And I just keep saying, I don't know. It's just 2019. <laughs> yeah. All I can tell them is 2019. There's no idea as to when yet, but 2019. And it's not just Disney World. It's Disneyland also. So you're not limited to one park. True. The, the one thing we do know is that Disneyland will get theirs open first. They are, ahead, right. they are further ahead along in the process than Disney World is. Yeah, I guess Disneyland's the summer and Disney World is the fall, but nobody else, you know. Beyond that, we don't know. You know and <laughs> Brandy just said, look, that looks like we're going to California. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, and it's definitely, um, I don't know. I had something I just completely lost. <laughs> it. Wow, I haven't done that in a long time. All right, cool. Uh, All right, well, then one last bit of news, and okay. I just discovered this today. But if you've been in Disney World at all any time recently, uh, basically since Hurricane Irma, I think is the hurricane that came down, uh, came came well, through. Came through. Uh, Disney Rolled World. Through town. Disney World this past year, there has been a lot of construction over next to the entrance of Adventureland. Yes. You remember, and I spoke with a cast member, and I was talking about how excited I was to see that construction over there because I'm so I'm like. Really excited and super hoping for a Moana, a Moana meet and greet. And I think that that might actually be happening. But I just found out that that's where they're going to rumor. And this is a rumor. We love but, rumors. Yes. It'll Club, be on the internet soon. Therefore, it'll be real. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's where Club 33 is going to be. And the doorbell has been spotted. Oh. Eek. Yeah. Now, not that I'm ever going to get in there. <laughs> I think maybe... <laughs> Maybe all of his agents could get together and maybe yeah. be able to do it. But anyway. Hey, I'm using connections for that one. Yeah, well, hopefully we'll know somebody who can, That's we right. can get in. But I thought that was pretty cool that the doorbell was actually spotted. So it really kind of confirms those rumors. One other thing that came out this week was that Pixar experience they announced. Did you see that? Yes, I am so excited for that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so um, the details to that, remind us what the details are on that, if, if you can remember. So it'll be at Grand Floridian, ages 4 to 12. Sorry, I don't have that. I think with that's right. Me. Yeah. Okay. Um, it starts off with something with Buzz, and then it goes to Woody and Jesse, and then there's something Cars related, and I there was one other that it ended on, and I can't remember what it was. 
one other Pixar theme. Yeah, it's, I really kind of hate that it's 4 to 12. I mean, I understand why it's 4 to 12, but right. um, we're going to be down there this summer. And I thought, oh, man, that's a great thing to try out. And then I remembered that Amelia will not be 4 until August. So we're <laughs> going to miss it, barely. But isn't currently the kids' clubs that are unfortunately closing this summer? Yes. Um, oh, hey, there's Tracy. three, I'm aren't sorry. they? Go ahead. Repeat that again. I'm sorry. The kids, like um, Lilo's place, yes. and them, they start at three. So I was surprised that this one's not. Yeah, I thought it was kind of an odd age because I knew that those started at three. And Tracy just chimed in and said that it was at the Contemporary and not at the Grand Floridian. You're right. I'm so sorry. Oh. Yep, the Contemporary. Um, but it's nice for like those kids clubs for parents to have a nice out an evening out that by themselves without their children and their children are going to have a really good time also kind of like kids clubs on the ships. Well, it's $65. And honestly, I think that that is a reasonable price for, for the day. Yeah. It's, it's through, it starts at 5 PM, right? 5 to 11, 10 or 11. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So $65 for babysitter solid. Yeah. I mean, well, and not to mention the experience that you would get to go with it. I, I'm, I don't know. I know Amelia would love, love, love that. So Kinsley would too. She, I think that if it's still going in September, because it is just a trial run to, you know, to see how it goes. If it's still going in September, we might do it for her. Cool. Then I can report back. Cool. <laughs> All right, guys. So let's go ahead and get into our show. So as you know, we have a sort of introduced Heather here to uh, you guys but we're going to get a little bit more detailed about that. So we've given you our announcements, but tonight we are talking about special diets at Disney. Special diets at Disney is really kind of a big deal. We all have friends, family, or ourselves that have dietary needs. Um, we have somebody watching right now who has special dietary needs. We have a guest on that has special dietary needs. And we also, I mean, as a teacher, I see kids all the time with peanut allergies things like that. So Heather, who is an agent with Middle of the Magic Travel, a co-worker of mine, has so graciously agreed to come on and really try to answer all of my questions because this is a new sort of adventure for me, being able to talk about this, answer all of my questions about the dietary needs. I would like for you guys who are watching, if you could please post your questions and if you'll put in the word info, you'll get a special link where you can add in questions that we can answer at a later time. So again, that special word is info. So you can just type that into the comments and we'll be happy to get those uh, questions answered to you at a later date. So with that said, Heather, why don't you go ahead and tell us just a little bit about yourself and what makes you an expert? I would say middle of the magic, uh, middle of the magic's resident dietary expert or special diet expert. We have, um, a combination. We, I have a six-year-old little girl who has a dairy allergy as well as um, gluten-free for autoimmune celiac. Um, I have the celiac markers and then a soy on top of it that I avoid. Um, so it's just something that we've always had to deal with uh, is what drew us to Disney, obviously, because they are so accommodating. Um, and I, I have many families that travel with me because I know about firsthand about those allergies and our agency, I can pass it on to all of you guys also to help take care of your clients. Well, we are very appreciative of that. Yes, we are. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, oddly enough, um, I have several families who are traveling here in the next year that um, have special dietary needs. So I'm just beyond grateful. You are educating me while we are doing this and I can better serve them. So very, very grateful. And that's one thing I love about our agency, too, is that we, you know, we all have something little that makes us stand out, but we all work together to help all of our clients. That's right. Hashtag together is better, right? That's <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm sorry. I had to throw in the Jimmy you, Fallon. You have to just, say, yeah, I just saw that part. <laughs> I, I, yeah. So are you Jimmy or, or, or am I? Am I Justin? You're Jimmy? Sure. Okay, sure. I don't know. You're the funnier one. <laughs> I don't know who's funnier, Justin or anyway. I don't know. That's a good question. <laughs> all right. Cool. All right, um, so when did you start traveling to Disney um, and using, I'm using, that's so weird, that's a, probably the, not the right word, but when did you start traveling to Disney and start um, thinking about these special dietary needs? I mean, obviously, a marker for celiac has probably been around with you for a long time, right? Um, six years. 
okay. right after I had Kinsley. Um, I had had problems for a long time, but they say that something traumatic or life changing, like having a child or surgery or something like that, is usually what brings out the um, testing to show the markings. Um, so right after I had her was when I was diagnosed. And then as she got older, she started to show the symptoms. So I think she was diagnosed at two. But so we've been completely gluten free for four years, like our whole house, basically. Wow. Um, and we went when she was three for the first time. So lots of research started four years ago. And then it just continued for the last four years to stay up to date and make sure that I know exactly what's going on with Disney and their changes and all of that stuff. Well, that's great. Do you happen to have a blog or anything like that that you keep up with that you personally like to do? Not that I personally do, no. Okay. All right, cool. So when you say where well, they change, you mean like as they add in new restaurants and change the menu or? Yeah, because Disney changes their, you know, they have seasonally yeah. items and stuff like that. So um, they also change suppliers and vendors. So I try to stay on top of those announcements. Like when I see that a new menu comes out and it's something that they've not offered before, then I'll email special diets and say, Hey, what's in this? Are you still using? Um, typically they use Bob Rudd's meal for their gluten-free allergen stuff. Um, or Namaste is the, a different mm -hmm. brand. Um, but they do in the last few months have changed suppliers. So they're not, they're getting away from that one brand and going more over to the Bob Red, Bob, Bob's Red Mill um, and not as much of the Namaste. So for people who have peanut allergies, that is a potential problem because they use shared lines. Ah, okay. So there's no, pe there's no peanuts in the allergen mix, but it, yeah. but it it's lines, produced on the lines. same. Yeah. So that's something that I try to stay up to date with all the time. Okay, well, let me throw this question at you, and you don't know that I'm asking you this question, but it was asked to me by somebody online recently. They said that Disney has changed their wording from gluten-free to gluten-friendly. Do you know La anything about that? Lawsuits. Because they are not a dedicated facility, they do make things that contain gluten in the same kitchen. They okay. cannot say that it's – there's there's potential for cross-contamination so that they it's – it's a protection. Okay, right. that makes complete sense. I was, I have been doing my research. Um, actually, for the most of the day, I've been online reading and doing my research, and I and I did notice that um, what Disney does within their kitchens is they don't have separate kitchens, but they have dedicated areas for preparing um, dietary friendly foods. Is that accurate? Right. So, um, like Kona Cafe inside the Polynesian, mm -hmm. you. Um, Kona, Ohana, they share part of a restaurant or part of a kitchen. Okay. okay. And that's where they do all of the allergy stuff. But then they have their separate regular kitchens also. Oh, okay. I understand. That makes sense. Yeah. And then, yes, um, some of them you can get French fries and stuff like that. And some of them gluten free wise, dedicated fryers. All of it, the bread is stuff and the fries are fried in that same fryer. So then technically your French fries aren't safe for something with a wheat or a gluten sensitivity. Okay. Uh, that's another thing that I had read about was about the fryers. Particularly they were trying to talk about how they're, they were trying to be peanut free. Um, but again, they don't have dedicated fryers necessarily. And that they were working towards using different kinds of oils. Um, but nothing's set in stone yet. As yeah. As, as the fryers are concerned. It's not official yet, but they've been trying to go away from that and and away from soy oil also because of the soy allergens. Uh, it's pretty cool that Disney is so dedicated to making sure that, you know, everybody can eat when they go to Disney. And, you know, why don't you share with us maybe one of your experiences? I mean, I guess maybe... Okay, so when we put all this money into our dining plan, right? So you're going on vacation and you're paying X amount of dollars, which is not, you know, the cheapest thing <laughs> to do in going to Disney. Um, do you get? Do you feel like you get a lesser value when you are not necessarily eating everything on the buffet, or you don't order off the menu, or do you think it's more magical? I mean, 
For us, it's magical because we don't get to eat out at a lot of places um, when we're at home because they're not safe. They don't take those precautions that Disney does. So even though we're not getting all of those cupcakes and stuff that everybody else can, like the rose gold cupcakes that everybody is posting <laughs> right now, um, we can't have things like that. But they do have other special, like Aaron McKenna's. We love Aaron McKenna's. And you can use snack credits there. So that is worth it to us. Well, that's what I was going to say. Aaron McKenna's or even Sprinkles, they need to have a gluten-free and sprinkles. Gold, rose gold cupcake for you guys. <laughs> yeah, but they have that red velvet one, and it's pretty good. So, <laughs> um, so for us, it's still it's still magical because there are things that we can't have anywhere else but Disney. Um, on our most recent trip, we went to Ohana one night for dinner. You know, they have the bread pudding that everybody loves. My husband was raving about it, but then the chef brought us. Um, banana chocolate chip bread and a scoops of ice cream and berries and it was just delicious and to us that was magical because we don't get to experience stuff like that so so one of our um one of our watchers just made a really great joke (laughs) (laughs) and he said to stay off of peter pan (laughs) thank you scott for making me laugh it's like you're sitting right here in this spot because <laughs> that's usually what that's what that would have said. <laughs> I love that, Scott. Thank you. Thank you. Um, well, that's really cool to hear, though, that it is magical and that you can go and you can maybe maybe relax just a little bit. So that, yeah, that sort of leads me into one of my next questions. Um, when you go and you are having dinner at whether it's Ohana's or Crystal Palace or one of the Disney restaurants that are on property, um, what what precautions do you take, one, before you get there, and two, while you are there? So when you make those dining reservations, your travel agent, because there are some that like to do them themselves, sure. They Disney has that area where you can click, for Disney World, <sighs> where you click special requests, and it has the top eight or other where you can check the box if you're, um, if your allergen isn't listed. So that's there. And for some, that's a times now that that's all that we do for our trips. We have it there. It's noted when we go to the restaurant, it, they print off your ticket and it has allergen allergy right on the top in red. Um, but my first couple trips, I always emailed special diets ahead of time with our reservation number so that they would know also. So that's something that we can do for our clients specifically is yep. making sure that we're um, emailing di- the special diets uh, email and with the confirmation number in it. Yep. The, with the confirmation number, the restaurant, and then what the allergens are. Okay. So what do you do when you're there? Do you just say, hey, it's already all documented and I don't need to worry about anything? Um, I still talk to the chef because a lot of times – there's things on, that are not on the allergy menu that they can still accommodate by leaving a sauce or a side or something off to make it allergen friendly for us. And just for peace of mind, I still talk to the chef. Well, I can imagine, you know, um, I have uh, one of my clients who's going in October. Her son has, you know, a severe peanut allergy. Um, it's it, it would be scary. And so I know for peace of mind, I, if I were her, when I'm sitting in a restaurant, I would kindly and politely talk to the uh, server and maybe ask to speak with the chef or whatever about that peanut allergy. And that's something that we can advise our clients to do on a regular basis, right? And, and it's individualized. Some people are perfectly fine just reading off the menu and speaking with your wait staff, but others do ask to speak to a chef. So it just... It depends on your comfort level, how you feel. You know, as parents, we kind of have that intuition, like maybe this person isn't a, trained specifically like I would like them to be. I'd like the peace of mind of speaking with the chef also. So there, there's always the option to speak to the chef or the manager if it's a quick service. Okay. Um, I've seen picture. I've actually seen it with my own two eyes. The chef will actually accompany the guest up to the buffet and show them what they can and cannot Mm -hmm. while they're there, right? Yes. Chef Mickey does not do that. Chef Mickey actually has um, a brochure type menu that has every item that's on their buffet and then the allergens that it contains. So at your table, the chef will go through there and ask you what you want and then bring it from the back. 
Oh, so there's, is that, does that in hopefully ensure no cross contamination then? Correct. Okay. Um, but like Tusker house, that buffet in Balma, the chef has always walked with us through the buffet. Okay. Um, and they're pretty good. Like, at Disneyland, when we went to Paradise Pier, he walked me through and he told me that this section here is just meat. It's all gluten-free. You can take it from the buffet. There's nothing around it that can contaminate it. But then we went to, like, where the eggs are not comfortable with you taking it because of cross-contamination. I'll bring it from the back. So they're good themselves at saying, oh, you're okay to take this from the buffet. Don't take this from the buffet. That's cool. Wow, it really is magical. I mean, I can try <laughs> anybody who has a, a child or themselves who have any kind of special dietary need, whether it be severe, you know, th- life-threatening, because that exists, um, yeah. to even being mild, how how wonderful that would be to know that you, well, I mean, who wants to go on vacation and not feel good? Exactly. You know. Well, that's cool. So now there are certain menus, and I'm going to need this back. Sure. There are certain menus, though, that... Or maybe I'm wrong. Do all restaurants that you go to that maybe are not buffets, do they have um, sit down or excuse me, uh, do they have menus? And I'm going to throw up on here while you're talking some of the couple of menus that you gave to me to share with our watchers. Um, so all of the Disney owned restaurants have allergen menus. Okay. All of them do. But at Epcot in the World Showcase, those restaurants are not all Disney owned. So they don't all have allergy menus. Really? I didn't know that. So this is, oh, let's see, what am I showing right now? This is Flame Tree Barbecue, and I know you can't see this, but I'm showing the Flame Tree Barbecue um, menu up right now, and it's listed it has the gluten, wheat allergy-friendly, soy allergy-friendly, uh, egg, peanut. I'm trying to think. Of, I can't tell. Oh, shellfish. Wow, mm-hmm. that's really awesome. And it lists a dessert and the kid-friendly meals with each and every one of them. Right. So do you just request this menu when you go in? Yep. When you walk up to Flame Tree, you'll, um, whoever's working the cash register there, you'll just ask them if I can, if you could see an allergy menu and let them know that you have an allergy. They'll place the order, but then the manager will actually be the one to prepare your meal. Okay. And they bring it out on a different colored tray. Oh, so that that way we can they can make sure that that okay Correct. that's really cool yep. I didn't realize that and so now I'm showing Akershish now Akershish is a little bit different this is the breakfast menu it looks like and that's a buffet or part of it right part of it is so when we go here we buffet there because it's so pastry based. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, yes, it is. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes. So for us, nothing there is safe. They do have options. They have the gluten-free muffins, gluten-free waffles that they'll bring us from the back. But then if they're, if we want yogurt or fruit, well, not yogurt for Kinsley, but um, if we want fruit or something like that that's on the buffet, they also will bring that out for us as well. Um, but then the family style, most of it is already safe for us. So they just sit that down on the table and we all share it. But like I said, then they bring the safe pastries from the back. Okay. Because that's the good part anyway, the safe pastry. <laughs> and the bacon. Yeah. Yes. The bacon. I love the potato casserole. That's my favorite. Yes. Listen, all the I'm hungry, honestly, right now. <laughs> so I'm talking about food. And, you know, a big part of it is... Is it, it's not funny how every time we start talking about Disney, food comes up? Well, that's what I was like. I was like, such a, it's such a big part of planning a Disney vacation. And it's also, you know, Disney has quite the reputation of being the place to go eat for those who are foodies. And, those, you and know, for those who have allergies. I mean, we eat safer there than we can most places in the United States. It's just, that's... That was what made us go there for our first trip. Besides my daughter be- loving princesses, the fact that we were going to eat safe and I was going to have gluten-free beignets. Like, who would have thought that I could have a beignet? <laughs> That's really cool. That's really yeah. cool. How nice is that? I mean, really, that, that it brings another element of magic to it. You know, as a vacation planner, um, the thing that I love about what I do is I know that I I'm planning these really special moments for families uh, and particularly kids. I mean, I, we love Disney without kids a yes. lot. We love Disney a lot without kids, but we have kids and 
And we like to see other children having a wonderful time. And, and knowing that when you have clients who do live in the world of having the special diet, that it adds a whole nother element of magic to it. I, I really never thought about that until we were sitting here talking with you. Um, so Brandy says, David is allergic to peanuts and also onions, which is something I'm worried about since a lot of food has onions already cooked into them. Interesting. Well, she says that them. would be something that I would talk to the chef about. Yes. To okay. make sure. Yeah. So just pull the, so Brandy, if you're still watching, just talk to the chef, talk to your server. And I, so how does that work? Actually, let me ask you that. So if you want to speak with the chef, do you just tell the server we have a special dietary need and we need to speak with the chef? Yep. Okay. Easy enough. I didn't didn't know it was that easy. <laughs> yeah, they it, they're trained for it. Um, there are a few who will try to say, "Oh no, I you don't need to. I can take care of you." And there are a few. Um, tutorial for no, we don't speak to a chef because those they're 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 on top of it. They know. Um, I'm trying to think. There's a few other places that we don't, but there are like few places that we do it just it just depends on the restaurant and how we feel and like in epcot we always talk to the chefs because they don't have those allergy menus okay and that's what i was just getting ready to go to next could you talk a little bit more in depth about um epcot and the restaurants in epcot because that is where a lot of people go to eat yes so coral reef is disney owned it has an allergy menu allergy menu um it's mostly it's mostly the world showcase. Those, you know, um, Tokyo or Japan, Norway, though, Morocco, they, they will talk to you, but you need to talk to the chef because they don't have that menu. Okay. Um, uh, let me go a little bit more in depth about that. Uh, as far as like the restaurants, when you say the restaurants, do you mean our table service restaurants that are within there? Or is that the entire pavilion? The entire pavilion. Okay. All right. Hmm. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Um, they, they have options. We never eat in Italy because it's Italy. <laughs> <laughs> um, but for peanut allergy or something like that, you could make it work. But I, I never recommend Italy to my gluten-free clients because there's just flour flying everywhere. <laughs> they have... They do have options if you want to chance it, but I've never personally felt safe enough to do it um, just from different reviews that I have read and from speaking with the chefs in passing. When I go on these research trips, you know, I do, even if I don't eat there, I stop to talk to them to see what their thoughts are. And, and they've always offered to make meals, but they've always said there's flour everywhere. The pizzas they toss, the pasta, all of that stuff. It's a big risk for somebody who needs to be gluten free. Yeah, I can see. Yeah, we have we, actually one of our, our closest friends has um, almost the exact same um, family build family makeup that, that, you, that have. you have. And we just ate with, we ate lunch with them today. And one of the places we recommended <laughs> was an Italian place. And she's like, no, I can't even walk there. <laughs> so it was it was quite interesting because the place we knew we were going to go eat at today, we thought it opened up earlier than it did. We got there and went, oh. It doesn't open up for another hour. Well, then what was around here? So we started naming off all these places. And, and it was like, no, 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 no. You know, and I'm fighting like, well, we're and driving that's back exactly... past, you know, where we, we passed to get back to where we're at. So. Of course, my thought was we should just drive to Disney. Because they <laughs> are... that's exactly it. And that is exact. that is part of the magic is that because we can't at home, that's what it is. Can't go there. Can't go there. Can't go there maybe, but don't really want to chance it. Can't go there. Can't go there. And then at Disney, oh, we can go here, 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 and here. So yeah. it is magical. So are there um, other, are there restaurants? I know you said you don't recommend the restaurants in Italy, but are there other restaurants within World Showcase that you think are maybe better than others since they aren't Disney owned? Um, Let's see. So, we always eat breakfast with the princesses every time, yeah. and we've never had a problem there. Okay. Um, they're they're amazing with allergies. Coral Reef has been great every time. Um, Sunshine Seasons for quick service is great. Um, we really 
don't eat in the World Showcase that much, us personally. Well, and I think oh. that kind of answers the question, though. I mean, no, yeah, no. we do. We do at the festivals. Like, I'm coming down for flower and garden next month, and I will be having that gluten free lemon scone because I just look forward to it every year. <laughs> so there are there are those things, and then in Canada, you can get the scallops at the flower and garden every year uh, at their food booth. Um, the violet lemonade, you know, stuff like that. They, there are options through the world showcase. You just have to be a little more careful. Okay. Well, that actually was on my list of things to talk about. When, and one of the big ones for me was like, well, what about food and wine festival? What do you do for like, you know, those types of festivals? They do have the gluten-free options marked. Okay. So you, and the, on the, any, Yep, and the vegetarian. They have the vegetarian That's options. That's the one I pay mark. attention to because I like vegetarian food, so I don't ever think about the others. Do so they mark, like, any peanut allergy? They they don't. Just the gluten and vegetarian are the only ones that they mark. Okay. And I would imagine, I know, I, just in, again, a little bit of the research that I had done, they also don't prepare the food really right there within those little marketplaces or whatever they call them. Dairy yeah. food and wine and, and flower and garden. And so I know they also can't always guarantee, particularly with peanuts, the cross contamination. Cross contamination. But they do all have a binder at them oh. with the ingredients. So if you're questioning if something's safe, That's good they have that there. Now, here's a question. We didn't discuss this, and, and forgive me, and you, just, you can just shut the question down. But <laughs> what about alcohol? What can you, is, I mean, beer, is that even an option for you? Um, they, so I've been checking out the menus for Flower and Garden and they're having Cider Boys cider this year and that's gluten free. So that's exciting. Um, most of the wines are, um, beer itself is not for gluten free. That's not an option. Um, but most of the mixed drinks are. Okay. Okay. That's good. I, I tip, I personally don't drink a lot. My husband takes care of that for our family. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I do pay attention to what's safe for my clients or whatever. And they, Disney, the bartenders know what alcohol is safe and what is not. You know, most of the rum, if it's been derived from something that is not safe, they'll tell you. They know which brands are okay. All right, so let's move away from maybe te technically like restaurants and let's talk about special events because that's kind of where we were going anyway because we were talking about food and wine and if, forgive Henry, he's getting up and he's taking care of the dogs. So, um, and let me throw that out there again, guys. If you want any more info on special diets and traveling to Disney, please type info in to the comments and it'll lead you to a few links where you can put in your questions and we can get those answers out to you as soon as possible. Um, all right, so we're talking about special events, food and wine, and, you know, wine and, and food are important to that, but we also have special events that are really geared, I don't want to say to children, because they're geared to the whole family, but you've got the Christmas party, and you also have the uh, Halloween parties. So what can you tell us about special diets in those types of um, events? So for the Halloween party, you still trick or treat like everybody else does. And then if, if you tell them that you have an allergy, you get a coin. And then at the end of the party, you can take these coins up to the cast members and they have where you redeem those coins for safe snacks. They have, um, the surf, surf sweets, gummy bears, gum or jelly beans, enjoy life, um, the brownies, the cookies, all of that type of stuff. The pre, they're prepackaged snacks. Um, uh, which you can guarantee some safety there too. Yeah, especially with Enjoy Life. Enjoy Life, like that brand, it's top eight free, um, and it's good chocolate too. <laughs> uh, when you when you say top eight free, you're talking about the top eight allergies. Yes, um, nuts, peanuts, tree nuts, peanuts, dairy, soy, wheat, gluten, and egg. Wow. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so, so most allergy uh, families yeah. are familiar with Enjoy Life because it seems to be a staple, I feel like. So it's really nice to see those offered at Disney. Um, so your your daughter has participated in getting the coins. So when you walk up, you just ask for the, the, the coin? When you're there, you just tell them you have an allergy and they give it to you. 
they put it in your little bag or whatever. Um, also new for us was this this past this trip we took past, this last month. Sorry, we did the happily ever dessert party for the first time. Right. Um, that one I had to email special diets in advance with the night of our party and a reservation and what our specific allergens were. And they gave us this plate of so much stuff. <laughs> it was um, the baby cakes, cupcakes, the little mini ones, breads from Erin McKenna's, jelly beans, gummy bears. I don't even remember what else was on that plate. It was so much stuff. Did you get um, a picture of it? I didn't. I thought I did, but I, on our, I missed a lot of pictures on this trip because we got there on Sunday, Saturday, and Tuesday my phone completely died. Oh, I had to oh, no. Verizon send me a new one, so <laughs> uh, that made for an interesting trip, needless to say. Um, so I didn't get a lot of pictures on this last trip, unfortunately. But that is something that we were always hesitant to do because we didn't know if it would be worth the money because you do pay for those dessert parties. Um, had dinner beforehand so we were so full we didn't eat a lot of that dessert so that is something to keep in mind too is do not eat a huge dinner before you go to one of those dessert parties whether you have an allergy or not those dessert parties will fill you up yeah yeah Yeah. they're wonderful we we did one on our last trip and i'm like man every dessert party option i can find (laughs) i'm just like it needs to be done um we also did the tea party for my daughter's birthday this trip. Oh, you know, that's something I've never done. I've always wanted to do it. It was amazing. And I do have those pictures I can send you when we're done. Um, the chef came right out. The The server came up to us, said, I see you have an allergen. I'm going to go get the chef. And he came out, and he was amazing. He took our allergies. Um, there was nine of us, so four little girls. Um, oh, awesome. Six, six, six of us total with the gluten allergy so he had his work cut out for him (laughs) um two adults and four little ones yeah it it was a big allergen party but he he blew it away he took such good care of us and we had so many options and the tea it was a great birthday experience for her so I highly recommend that for allergies also Uh, with something that's so that you know the tea party is so pastry based or flour based but we had they had gluten free bread to make the little sandwiches for. They had the little cupcakes and they had breads from Aaron McKenna's again. Um, and then the desserts they had the chocolate covered strawberries or um, the strawberries and whipped cream or whatever she wanted. They had alternatives for her, so that was nice. Um, so again, those things that you don't think are going to be options because you have allergies, they totally make them available for you also. Yeah, I have to say, if, if somebody was talking about going to a tea party and they had a gluten intolerance, <laughs> I would be like, um, well, I'll have to look yeah. into oh, that. It was amazing. <laughs> I, oh, those cucumber sandwiches were so delicious. I can't wait to go back. <laughs> uh, I may have to plan that with, with my little princesses for our July trip. Sounds good. My husband even liked it, too. He had a good time. So okay. it was it was a nice family thing. Cool. Um, and then last year we did the Pirates and Pals fireworks yeah, voyage, yeah. and they were able to make that a, um, allergen friendly for us also. So yeah. all of them. They really go all out. I mean, I think that's that's really kind of the thing that we're hitting on here, which honestly I didn't expect to, I mean, I, I did, but I didn't um, expect to kind of hit on is they really take care of you no matter what the event is. I mean, you know. They do. I guess it's really just, the ones that aren't Disney owned that are really the hardest to uh, accommodate, but they still can accommodate. But they still can. Like if you go um, to Italy and you have peanuts or any of those, they're still going to take care of you just fine. Or Japan, even with, a um, what's the hibachi place? Um, uh, yes. Even they're gluten friendly. They will use gluten free soy sauce. If you want to, I mean, they try. So that is an option in the world showcase, but it's just, we tend to stick to the ones that have more options for us because we eat hibachi at home. But I always forget about that. They do have gluten-free soy sauce there. So that is an option. Okay. All right. So we've talked a lot about Disney world and I'm, I'm just making an assumption that Disneyland is um, the same way. You know, I know you talked about paradise pier. So what about Disney cruise line? 
Disney Cruise Line, I feel, I don't want to say one is better than the other, but they do, they go above and beyond. But what makes them a little bit easier is that you have that rotational dining. So you have that same person every night who knows that you have that allergy and is making sure that you're taken care of. Yeah. So how do you yeah. handle or do you even handle um, uh, the buffet like Cabanas? So with your cruise line, let me back up just a minute there. Sorry. You want to make sure that that's noted ahead of time. When you book that one, that has to be, when we book it for our clients, I always have to call in to make sure that that's added to the reservation. Um, that way when you're getting on the ship that they see that and they know, but you always want to make sure you tell them also just in case. Um, but like with Cabana's same situation as a buffet at Disney World, you let them know, they'll bring it from the back, or you can order ahead of time, whichever you prefer. Now, do you usually use the buffet, or do you just go to the restaurants, since it's uh, so much more accommodating, I guess you could say, within the restaurants? On Disney Cruise Line, I don't think there's one that's better than the other. They take okay. care, they take good care of you at both. All right. All right. That's cool. Yeah, I could really imagine uh, that Disney Cruise Line would be, just because you do get such special attention, whether you have dietary needs or not. Um, yeah. You know, being well taken care of. Um, do they just bring you a, okay, so with the rotational dining, right? Mm -hmm. Each night that you're there, you're going to have a different kind of menu. So you're going to be given an allergy menu, right? They typically ha try to have you order your allergen meal the night before to make sure it's ready at the same time as everybody else's. Because that's one thing we forgot to mention at Disney world is that sometimes you do have to wait a little bit longer because they're taking the extra steps to make sure that your meals are safe. Okay. Well, so it, right. I take all the time you need as long as I'm, nobody's going to get sick. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and uh, so on the cruise line, they do ask you to order the night before if possible so that it is ready at the same time as the rest of your tables. Okay. That makes sense. So your wait staff, your staff will go over what's going to be served that next night and then you can pick out what you want. Yeah, that's kind of, that was kind of where I was going with that question is, you know, you have a different menu every night. So would you have a different menu throughout your stay, a different allergy menu throughout the, you know, each night? Yes and no. There can be, but you can always pick from those ones that you know are free. They have those staples that okay. they keep on board to always have safe. Okay. That's cool. But from, from my clients experiences, I'm learning that most things that they have, they're able to make similar, not exactly the same, but similar to accommodate allergens. That's cool. That's wonderful. Again, Disney knows how to do it right. It's true. All right. So we have been actually on for quite, quite a long time. Let's see. What's Brandy say? I'm literally eating while watching this. <laughs> well, Brandy, I haven't had dinner, so it's. And then when you said scallops earlier, I was like, okay. <laughs> um, all right. So, um, where was I going with that? We've been <laughs> so, on for a while. Oh, yeah. oh, one more thing about Disney Cruise Line. Yeah. When at Castaway Key, when you're getting off, or Bahamas, or wherever you're going, they will give you. You. Really. Because and but. On Castaway Key, there's going to be safe options there. But if you're not comfortable, they will give you something to take with you that is allergy-friendly. I love Disney. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> I love them. I think they're great. Oh, okay. Really quick about um, also about the uh, Disney Cruise Line. What about the Oceaneers Club? Like when you, if you're your children, you know, how do they accommodate you within the clubs? Same way they do for Lilo's and Simba's and all of those. You ahead of time when you're taking your kids, let them know and they will make sure that you pre-order basically to make okay. sure that it's safe. All right. Cause I mean, I know, well, I know like, um, uh, Minnie, my oldest daughter, she has a penicillin allergy and I was like, like I didn't really want to tell them because I'm like, you're not going to give her penicillin. So why should I tell you, you know, but they're like, no, no, no. You know, and they put like a special thing on her wristband for the mm -hmm. years engineers club and then I thought well that's nice but then I thought well geez what do they do if it's like you know a peanut allergy or something where a kid could really get sick um and so I did so you just kind of order ahead of time and make sure everybody knows and right yep. okay 
So I know that there's other special dietary needs, and you, and you may not know this, uh, any of these questions, but there are some people who I had somebody ask me about the alpha, and I think it's gal, G-A-L, gall, alpha gall. Are you familiar with this at all? This is the, the allergy. That so they can't food. have red, they can't have red meat. Yeah. Red, yeah. But it's, it's red meat, red meat, and anything made from beef. Like so gel- gelatin, yeah. gelatin, gummy bears, gummy worms, all of that stuff. Yep. Yeah. So any of those special diets, like I have a client with EOE, so they can't have milk, peanuts, eggs, um, sesame, garlic, and something else. But those are the type that we, as their agents, need to make sure we're emailing special diets ahead of time for. But those chefs will work with them. Like for yours, they can't have beef. And I want to say chick pork or chick pork pork yeah pork it's some know. other protein yeah. it's another it's, protein oh it was oh it's it's venison venison they can't have venison either it was because they can't have they can't have um they can't have fish they, they can't can have, have gelatin wow. they can't have anything with gelatin yeah. yeah but those those are things that you the the chefs at disney are perfectly okay with where i mean they can work with someone who has just the one, like a gluten allergy with celiac, mm-hmm. or they have 10 different. You just have to, those are the ones that we want to make sure we email ahead of time to give the restaurant a heads up that day. Um, but then you also want to make sure you talk with the chef because they can prepare you something without there, without those allergens in it. They can get you a safe meal. It might not be fancy. It might just be like, some chicken and some roasted vegetables, but they're going to get you something that is safe and is not going to make you sick. Well, and all of this, I, you know, and all talking about all this, this is really one more reason to make sure that you have a travel planner like us. Yeah. Because we are going to make sure that those details are taken care of, at least a travel planner for middle of the magic travel. So that's right. <laughs> that plug right in there. All right, so um, let's kind of just end this evening with um, just some really, like, must-have quick tips. So well, the one thing that I had written down is before your um, before your trip, have your travel agent make sure that, again, that kind of what we've been talking about all along is email special diets with that confirmation number for your dining and the um, the, the dietary need that you, that you have. What else do you have for us that you're like, you have to do this, you have to know this? For my anaphylactic clients, I always do the room cleaning. That Thank you. I totally forgot about that, yes. Um, because, you know, contact allergies with peanuts especially or dairy or egg, you know, you don't know who was in that room before you. I mean, obviously they clean the, the rooms, but there I have clients the littlest tiny bit of peanut residue it's going to send her to the hospital or make her have to use her EpiPen. So we do those allergen cleanings. Yeah. Just, I just call in the case. I VIP clean. Is that, is that accurate? <laughs> yeah, it works. Okay. <laughs> um, and those work for people with like dust, really bad dust mite or, yeah. or dogs because we do, Disney does let their service dogs in. So, you know, we love, we love everybody and we're not going to discriminate against somebody who has a service animal. So, Right. Those type of things, I'll do the VIP cleaning request also. Okay. So we've got email, the VIP clean, anything else that you're just like, you have to know this before you go? To use a travel agent for middle of the, ma- middle of the magic that's going to make sure it's all taken care of. Absolutely. <laughs> and I guess, I, and I'm sure, you know, maybe I'm, I'm off base here, but I'm assuming that if you live with, um, a special diet that you're used to talking to people, but I would say Disney is, um, known for their customer service. I mean, they're like the number one in the industry. There's a reason why there's a Disney Institute and people go to Disney to learn about business, how to run a business. So I would say, don't be afraid to talk to anybody about it. No, not at all. Yeah. They, they are trained when it comes to these allergens. They, They have the allergy menus for a reason because they want people to feel safe. But those managers and those chefs are there for you to be able to talk to if you are not comfortable ordering with the wait staff. So never feel, never feel like you're inconveniencing anybody by asking for that manager or that chef. Well, and it is your vacation and you have paid a lot of money for it. So that's right. You know, 
make sure that it's a good one. And between them, you guys, the client, being comfortable with it and having a, a, a travel agent with Middle of the Magic Travel, you're good to go. So awesome. Thank you so much for joining us. This has been quite the show and quite different. It was my pleasure. And you are more than welcome to come on and join us anytime that you want to. And we don't have to talk about such serious stuff then. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this is a very important topic. So, but thank you so much. It's, it's such a pleasure. It was my pleasure. Thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, anytime. And I guess with that said, we'll say goodnight, right? Yeah, I have no trivia. There is no trivia to find on allergies. <laughs> So um, you're, you're off the hook tonight for trivia. Awesome. So um, I'm good because I probably wouldn't be able to answer it yeah, anyway. I, I used to know all that stuff, and now I can't remember any of it. <laughs> uh, well, with that said, we'll be back 8.30 next week, but Henry will not be with me, and I haven't looked at my calendar because I am a one-week-at-a-time kind of gal, so I'm not even sure what the topic is, but I'm sure it'll be great. Hey, you never know. I could Skype in. Clearly, we've got that worked out. That's true. We do have I that worked Skype out. I could Skype that part of it in. <laughs> I promise not to be pulling the trailer when we Skype in. Thank you. Thank right. you for keeping us, keeping yourself safe yes, so you can get home to us. All right, Heather, you have a fantastic week. And everybody else out there watching, have a magical week. And we'll see you next time. See you guys. Bye, guys.